hello lovelies and welcome back to empower your paths intuitive mama channel where we talk all about natural birth home birth orgasmic birth and unassisted birth um in this video i'm reviewing my first trimester experience where i intend to bring value to your life and ideally improve your pregnancy if this is your first time here my name is rosa guerrero contreras and I am so excited to share five topics that stood out to me during my first three months of pregnancy. Physical changes and discomforts, areas of focus, healthy mental boundaries, self-education, and relationships. Let's get right into it. So physical changes and discomforts. Um, I gotta say guys, I am not the drama. <laughs> I am not one of these mamas who had a terrible first trimester experience. Um, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm gonna tell you a lot of things because I do have some ideas as to why my first trimester experience was more favorable than not um, after kind of consulting with several other mothers um, in addition to my midwife. I feel that quite honestly, and if you haven't seen my pre-pre-pregnancy preparation videos, please do um, go check that out in the Intuitive Mama playlist. The way that you take care of your body, the way that you take care of yourself, mentally, emotional, physical, spiritual, it all matters. It all matters. So if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not surrounded by good people, if, if things are not the way that you want them to be prior to pregnancy, Pregnancy is going to bring everything up to the surface. So I will say, I am not the drama and I thank everything that is good because I did not have morning sickness and I have yet to have morning sickness. My mom says that she got morning sickness in the seventh month. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not gonna put any energy, energy there. I'm just grateful. Remember, every pregnancy is different. So I could be smooth sailing this time and next time Maybe not so much, but every pregnancy is different. Every child comes into this world with a different palette, code, however you want to call it. Thoughts on why I didn't have morning sickness are essentially because I, I am and was, right? My, my lifestyle before being pregnant, I was um, pretty strictly vegan. I was exercising on a regular basis, uh, very much on the spiritual journey where I am focused in a very balanced way. Um, focused on my limitations, my fears, um, I don't want to call them character flaws, but just things that, you know, I can work on within myself. I had been and continue to be on this journey of healing all of my trauma um, and calling all of my power back. So just being aware of all of those things really have contributed to a positive pregnancy. And I believe it's possible for everyone. The fatigue and the sleepiness did not miss me. This is true. I was lit tired pretty much all three months. Um, and I wouldn't say like exhausted, but a big part of it was me really needing to nap all the time. And, you know, thinking that I was already very in touch with my body and all of this. But pregnancy makes it like 15 times more, 10 times more, 20 times more, a thousand times more. Your body, you and your body are like, we're doing a dance, right? Because in your, in your head, like, oh, I gotta do all these things. You know, I have to work, I have to do this, I have to do that. And your body's like, <laughs> don't you know what's going on in here? Don't you understand what's happening inside of you? Most people don't. I can understand and I can empathize with a lot of mamas out there who get frustrated because it can be frustrating when you have so many expectations. But all of your expectations, all of your assumptions, everything that you think is gonna happen during this pregnancy just bye <laughs> don't don't or else you're gonna cause yourself unnecessary sufferings i also haven't had any intense cravings and this is something that i was kind of like oh i was a little bummed about i was you know kind of excited Ooh, like i just get to indulge and i get to eat and you know i'm so excited to stuff my face um but it was actually, it's actually been very opposite. I've actually have had more food aversions than food cravings. So I'm not over here needing to, you know, like mm, donuts. Mm, mm, mm. There's none of that whatsoever. If anything, my body's like, all right, girl, you better make the best out of this, you know, small size meal 
because my body is demanding high <laughs> nutrient dense food first trimester it was like fruit but it was summertime right so it's fruit 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 fresh 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 now that we're coming into the fall time i want really you know i just want soups i want soups and i want like broths and i want juices and um i want all these things so very you know nutrient dense foods but not in a heavy form um so you know eating like whole plates of food is not cool what's been the most challenging and what my body's been kind of like really confused about um especially because i wasn't eating so much protein before but now my midwife is suggesting that i eat 100 grams of protein a day holy shit that's a lot of protein <laughs> it's a lot of protein like for you to get that much protein in your meal like i don't even know i don't know how me eating people would do it anyways i don't know how women you know in in the past in history have done it i don't think they have quite honestly and so i wonder i want to know more i want to learn more about the food cravings haven't haven't been so consistent but they've been like seasonal like in the first trimester i needed to take this trip down memory lane to eat very nostalgic foods from my childhood so you know um breaking all the vegan and vegetarian rules there because i did eat arby's but just one time right and what's interesting also is that prior to being pregnant when i would consume any dairy or any cheese maybe on accident or whatever it might have been my body would give me feedback and say like oh this no <laughs> like you can't you can't do this we don't like this um and i would know for sure like okay that's not something that i want typically yes your body will know what you need but also if you're coming into the pregnancy with a destroyed gut if you're already extremely overweight if you already have you know a series of health issues if like if things have already been gone wrong for a long time then during pregnant they're only going to get worse they're only going to escalate um so I can't emphasize enough taking care of yourself before you get pregnant. It is just going to change your whole entire life, your whole entire world. Let's say you are taking care of yourself and eating all the right food and doing all the right things and you still have a really difficult pregnancy. Well, um, as this is the Intuitive Mama playlist, we, we are leading with our intuition. We are centered right in our spirituality and we are aware of our reality. So. Pregnancy is going to bring everything up from the surface that you need to deal with, that you need to focus on. So if that is taking care of yourself, if that is exercising, if that is journaling, whatever the tool may be. And let's talk about guilty pleasures because I've absolutely led, I've led most of my food journey with, you know, perseverance, with grit, with the intention to... To really break cycles and not to make myself uncomfortable but i've made myself uncomfortable and frustrated in a lot of situations because i've stuck to my guns right and so right now during pregnancy i am allowing myself to be flexible to be loose you know yes i've i've eaten ramen i've eaten like so many other processed foods that i may not have eaten before or just in really small quantities so like everything it's all about control it's all about moderation um you're not gonna die i i am really trying not to eat red dye 40 and stuff like that but another thing that is important and because i'm not trying to impose my lifestyle on my baby like even in utero so i want him to get a nice wide variety um, of what is available to them that's it's as simple as that after headaches uh, i also had quite a few headaches that were not fun pregnancy headaches. In the first trimester, I had a lot of pregnancy headaches and I'm going to review some of the ways in which you can ease the headaches. Obviously, drinking plenty of water to maintain optimal hydration. And when you do drink water, ensure that you optimize the chemical composition of the water because not all water is made equally. So add a pinch of salt, add some lemon, add some lime, add some uh, chlorophyll add whatever you want in order to spice your water up so that you give your body the opportunity to optimally and absorb all of those nutrients so from 
Home Birth on Your Own Terms by Heather Baker. I'm going to review some of the headache remedies. And the first one that she recommends is peppermint essential oils. I definitely use pe peppermint essential oils, especially not even for headaches necessarily, but just head pressure. And that really did help, you know. I just had my little vial here and I just put it under my nose and smelled it from time to time. And it actually did really relieve the headaches. Another modification to your diet is to add more protein um, to your diet. Intuitively, I had a dream in my first trimester to eat beef, but I am I do not feel called um, to consume animal protein at this time. So um, I got Vega vegan protein powder. And so I've been consuming a 30 gram protein shake every morning and it's been serving me quite well. In addition to the peppermint oil, you can also increase your magnesium intake, which I did purchase a dropper of magnesium that I add to my water. Um, in addition to the peppermint oil, you can also use lemon essential oils and spearmint essential oils. Massaging your head or your sinus areas, sleeping and resting in a dark place as much as possible, chiropractic adjustment, exercise to get the blood flowing. In addition to exercise, maybe some caffeine as well would be helpful. Overall, with the physical changes and discomforts in the first trimester, the most important component was management of my energy. With the sleepiness and the fatigue, it was it was just something that I had to manage, right? I had to manage my days, I had to understand and experience different activities or different instances when I were to exert a lot of energy. Um, so really planning things out well and knowing your limits, knowing um, whether you're going to be an early riser or not. not. Um, there's no way that I can get out of bed before like 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, 6 30 in the morning Ugh. before that I just it's it's just not possible it doesn't matter what time I go to sleep and um, definitely when it comes to you know like nighttime activities or being out in the world um, my pregnant self does not want to be outside after dark it's just not a thing I, I need to be right here on my couch with my body pillow and my boo thing okay that's <laughs> that's really all that's all that is required and we're just given given the belly all the love all the love i am a life coach so if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one life coaching support um opportunity whether that be for pregnancy whether that be for career whether that be for entrepreneurship um whether that be for dealing with aging parents um i'm absolutely open and available don't hesitate to reach out so if you like this video, please click on the like button, click on the subscribe button if you're interested in hearing more of what I have to say. And additionally, if you wanna be alerted every time I do put up a video, click on the notification bell. Um, lastly, I am an independent human being, so the way that I get up my abundance is gonna look very different. If you feel called to contribute to me directly, my Venmo, is down here and in the link below. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Rosa Guerrero Contreras. I am so happy um, to have shared all of this information and I will be following up with a second trimester and a third trimester overview as well. So again, thank you for following me on my journey. I'm so excited to continue this process with you and I hope you have a blessed, wonderful, compassionate, loving, nurturing, and caring day. Take care.